So what actually is homeostasis? Well, the basic level means staying the same. The term can be applied to regulating anything in an organism that maintains the same levels, from acidity, water, sugar, minerals, or anything else needed to maintain a healthy operating level. And one common use of the term is in regard of regulating body temperature. This thermoregulation is different in mammals and other warm-blooded creatures than in reptiles and other cold-blooded creatures. Cold-blooded animals don't maintain a constant warm body temperature, so in order to heat themselves up to an optimal operating temperature, they generally use the sun to lift their body temperatures up. This heating can be butterflies opening out their wings to catch most of the sunlight, or a snake laying out on hot rocks. Whatever method they use, they have an advantage in that their general metabolic rate is far lower than that of warm-blooded creatures, meaning they require less energy to keep themselves alive. But they also have a disadvantage in they're sluggish in the cold early mornings, leaving them vulnerable to being eaten until they've warmed themselves up. And if they're nocturnal, they can really normally only operate as ambush predators. So mammals and birds, which are the creatures that maintain a near constant body temperature, are generally more active than their cold-blooded counterparts, but also require more energy to do this. The heat from this comes from the operation of the muscles and from the organs like the liver to the brain. But there are problems with this. In times of food shortage, like the winter, animals may not have enough food to produce the heat required. So they may need to go into hibernation or adopt other strategies like controlled hypothermia or migrate to warmer areas or ones with more food. The techniques for maintaining a high body temperature include uh, things like shivering, laying down of insulating fat layers, having layers of fur, feathers or hair. At night time they may make insulated nests, dens or burrows or even beds to sleep in. This however is a real problem for smaller creatures or the young of the species. As the smaller something is, the greater surface area they have relative to the volume, which means that smaller animals lose heat faster. This in turn means that the smaller something is, the more food that is required as a proportion of its size. Consequently, it has a higher metabolism and a faster heartbeat. However, being too cold isn't a warm-blooded creature's only problem. It's also run into difficulty if it gets too hot. Then panting and sweating obvious ways of cooling down, the use of large ears and either flapping them or just pumping blood through fine capillaries near the surface will rapidly cool an animal down, as will reducing the amount of air trapped in the hairs of the skin by pulling the hairs flat to the surface of the skin. Why then do warm-blooded animals mind if they get either too hot or too cold? If an animal gets too hot, the enzymes in the body that control things like cellular respiration start to fail and can even denature if the temperature gets too high. This means they can't catalyse essential operations within the body, rapidly affecting organs like the heart and the brain. In addition to this, sweating that occurs to try and keep the body cool may dehydrate the body to a critical level. If it gets too cool, the body may sh start to shut down parts of the circulation system in order to conserve heat. If this isn't even enough, then breathing may slow up, along with heartbeat and the central nervous system, eventually a coma is likely, unless the body is somehow warmed, death will be likely to be following shortly afterwards. So that's homeostasis in regard of thermoregulation.